ready for the championships at 125 pounds. Spencer Lee, the two-time NCAA champion, undefeated, going up against the number two seed, Devin Schroeder, a junior from Purdue. Lee out of Murraysville, Pennsylvania, one of five Pennsylvania preps for the Hawkeyes. Here's how they got here at 125. You see Lee, the number one seed, beating Jack Medley from Michigan in the semifinals, and Devin Schroeder beating D. Augustino from Northwestern. And here they are, the number one and two seeds. You know, it, it, Schroeder's done a nice job to get to this level, but it's Spencer Lee, the two-time national champion. And then when he puts his hands on you, you know, he basically with a lot of two-on-ones, gets to a leg, finishes quickly. Just has so much great anticipation. Schroeder Still trying neutral, to keep guys. that Still leg neutral. tied up there. Lee bursts through with a bit of energy two green, there. Take down, two, the green, two. two green. And forcefully, Spencer Lee gets a takedown right away with two points. Last time they met, it was a 17-0 technical fall for the junior from Iowa. A win over Schroeder in the duel. Good showing there by Schroeder, though, getting a lot of energy into that escape. And that's where Lee basically takes advantage of a lot of his opponents. Now a quick go behind Three. there. Points for Lee. Spencer Lee of Franklin Regional High School, two-time NCAA champion, also a multiple world champion in age groups, cadet and juniors. He's had a huge impact on Iowa's culture, Jim. I, I really believe that's the case. And all those Pennsylvania athletes that they brought into the program, you know, the Iowa program has made a shift. They've, they've made a, a, a change in the way they've gone out there and, and recruited nationally. Good for them for making the adjustment, and I think it's resulted in uh, you know better performance, but more competition in the wrestling room, obviously. But uh, you know, but this guy is the guy that you know stirs the drink here for the Hawkeyes. Really gets it going. Has a great presence and really into his team's performance as well. I mean, that's he's a team guy. And, uh, and as a result of that, when your best guy, your, your two-time national champion, is into everybody else's performance, it just sets a, a great learning okay. environment. And that's what's really happened with this Iowa program. They are a team. And we've heard every adjective about Spencer Lee, and you just named a few. Team leader. He's humble. He's an example on the team. And he is one of the best. Just how good is he? Won the senior nationals. He's uh, qualified for the Olympic trials at 57 kilos. And after the NCAAs, he will be vying to be on the Olympic team for the United States in the Tokyo Olympics. Yeah, Lee with a pretty tough ride here in the top position. And he just makes it so tough on his opponents, basically even to get their breath and, and to get back up to their base. They haven't really tried. Come on, guys. Both the, of you need field. to improve. Both of you. Know, talk about the field all the rest of the 25 pounders in this country have had a difficult time getting off of their belly when spencer lee breaks them down and he loads up hips really well from this position gets wrist ties again and sometimes just works with a tight waist and just uh just goes into a back bridge right to be able to collect back points we haven't really ever seen that before at the at the college level it's unique and uh the rest of the field hasn't caught up to it Devin Schroeder out of Grand Rapids, Michigan, a three-time Michigan State champion, an industrial engineer major out of Catholic Central High School. His dad, Brian, wrestled at Grand Valley State University. And you know what? He's had quite a year. Stop, gentlemen. He's got an edge to him. He's Green, not afraid of anybody. You, A.J. Shop has had a big influence on his uh, wrestling as an down. assistant to Tony Erson. Yeah, that, I, I couldn't agree more. And, and where you see A.J. Shop was an expert in the top position. Uh, third place finisher for Our Edinburgh set, University. Uh, but a guy that uh, it was one of those people that you say, hey, there's 40 guys that, that each year that could compete for 10 national titles. He was in that category of people that didn't get it done himself, but he's turned into an excellent coach, and everywhere he's gone, people have improved in the top position, and Schroeder is one of them. Lee coming up hard. There. You see where Schroeder is trying to two keep red, that green, left reversal, right green, reversal. hand collected there, but Lee's able to bust out of it. He's right back to the top position. Only halfway, or 30 seconds into the second period. Lee out in front, 6-1, to one, looking for his first Big Ten title. Yeah, and I think that this is where the, the, the Iowa program is really focused this year, is just being tough in the top position. They're spending it uh, a lot of time trying to work and turn yeah, guys and red. control them. Oh. He's rewarded with the stall warning from the bottom position on Schroeder. 
lot of that's just because Schroeder just is having a difficult time getting his head up off the mat. It's a bad visual. You see, it's collapsing that elbow, really working hard. But see how hard Schroeder is working to keep that left arm free from locking that up. I mean, that's really kind of what you have to do. You'll take the stall warning over giving up the four-point uh, near fall. Defensively really keeps his body so tight to the opponent. Yeah, I mean, it just doesn't give you any room to breathe. Out of bounds, gentlemen. No change. And by this. And Spencer comes by. There's Larry Lee, Spencer's dad. Comes by his athleticism and uh, desire to compete naturally. Spent, uh, Spencer's dad, Larry, was the national Set, judo shot, coach go. for USA Judo. And his mom, Kathy, was an alternate on the Olympic uh, judo team back in the day. Take a look at uh, Lee there again. Working hard, you know, pretty much a parallel ride right now. And you hear me every now and then getting on that. But but uh, Lee is, is is unique in the fact that he's he can collect a lot of offensive tilts from this uh, parallel ride position. So it's not really, you know, he's he's aggressive up there in the top position. He's going to close out the top position, close out the period in the top position, which is what you like to see in tournament wrestling. And. Already, Schroeder has gone whoa, 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 longer than okay. most go with Spencer Lee. He's <laughs> averaging around oh, three well, minutes him. for each short, match John, this year. Certainly a leader in the consideration for the Hodge Trophy. Yeah, we, you know, we did a, a match a while back ago, and, and uh, walk-on Jack Bedley from, uh, from Michigan was able to go the whole uh, distance with uh, Lee, and we made uh, we just talk glowingly about Bedley, but, you know, that's the standard now. If you can go the whole match with this guy, with all of his offense, You've actually really accomplished a take down. takedown by Lee. Neutral, one red. Eight to two. Spencer Lee out front. Last time they met. Tech fall, 17-0. In just two minutes and 53 seconds. Schroeder didn't even get out of the first period. Now we're into the third period. It's eight to two. A shot by Schroeder trying to Get in, pull in the leg, and cut the corner. Yeah, he's able to go ahead and do that. But watch Lee go ahead and lock that crotch up right there. And working to get his leg back. He's going to go ahead and try to get that leg Two elevated. Green, take down. Schroeder gives up on the position. Didn't want to necessarily go to his back. But, you know, Tim, there's a myth out there that if you can get Spencer Lee into the third period, that you can, uh, you know, make this thing work. And, and uh and, and really do well for yourself. Number one is that very few people have got to the third period, but there's such an insurmountable lead by the time you get there. It, that, that is, myth has been debunked with the performance. And he red, looks fresh on top. He collected another point. He's aggressive on his feet. Spencer Lee, 40 seconds away from his first Big Ten title. He's a two-time NCAA title, but he's wrestling with as much confidence as anyone right now. Yeah, and it, it's just, uh, you know, a lot of guys have decided that, that uh, you know, Rivera moved up to 133. It's been a better weight for him. You know, that, that, that you take a look at that 33-pound that, uh, weight class when he was a freshman, actually 25-pound weight class when he was a freshman, one of the toughest in the country, much like 33 was. And then last year losing to Rivera, but this year he's been in control of the whole weight class and really going into the national tournament with a lot of momentum. It's going to be a four-point near fall. 15 to 2, and with riding time, 16 to 2. And it's a major decision for the Hawkeye. And they get their first Big Ten champion. It's Spencer's first Big Ten championship. And the Hawkeye fans get to cheer early. Let's take a look at Spencer Lee going to work. Defensive action right there coming back and a couple of good go-behinds against Schroeder. This is what's impressive too, being able two to get out green, the, uh, the legs. Green, That's uh, some of the red. better wrestlers in the country that he'll be facing. And of course, Larry Lee. Let's go to Shane, who's with the champ. All right, Spencer, you get that first Big Ten championship. You've won pretty much everything else. Got to be special. Uh, it was the next big, biggest thing, and I uh, went out and wrestled my hardest. And, you know, I wish I did a little more action there, but... Uh, Wins a win and uh, ready to watch my teammates. 
You've won a cadet world title, junior world title, two NCAA championships, now a Big Ten title. In your opinion, what separates good from great? Uh, I think mindset, you know, and uh, having a great support network. I have the best support network in the world with my teammates, family, friends, everything else in between. And, you know, they believe in me and I believe in them. So go Hawks. Spoke about your teammates. I was on the cusp of winning its 36th Big Ten title. What's it been like being a part of this? Uh, our team is super close and we're cheering each other on. I'm sure when I get back there, they, you know, they're gonna welcome me with open arms and then we're gonna be ready to watch the rest of our teammates go out there and do the best they can, wrestle the hard as they can and you know, put on a show. He's the reigning two-time NCAA champion at 125 pounds and now gives the Hawks a Big Ten champ at 125. Ready for 133 pounds, Sebastian Rivera, the Big Ten champion at 125 last year, up to 133. Roman Bravo Young, affectionately called RBY. The young man is only a sophomore. And Sebastian Rivera got here by beating a former national champion, Seth Gross, who's the number one seed from Wisconsin. This was full of excitement here. Gross got out to a nice lead in this match, and then Rivera was able to get an answering takedown at the end. An emotional response, a native from New Jersey, getting the crowd excited. And then you see that RBY beat Austin DeSanto for the trip to the championships. You know, two of the most athletic guys you're ever going to see in any weight class. RBY, uh, probably the fastest wrestler in, in, in college right now. Just you look, just take a look at him with his speed, the way he's able to take territory. Rivera has a unique shot. Again, last year's a, uh, Big Ten champion at this weight. And RBY coming directly up here. He's got Chuck's uh, Rivera by. He's able to get weight on the hands. A quick two points for RBY. Sophomore from Tucson, Arizona, Sunnyside High School, where he was 182-0, the outstanding wrestler, all four years in a row. RBI, a sophomore, was an All-American last year. At this weight, he placed eighth for the Penn State Nittany Lions. And RBI doing a nice job just doing that little control action right there. Beautiful little front trip towards the center of the mat, buying a little bit of time on the edge. Moving up. And these are the little things I think that make a difference in this match. He's already collected 35 seconds worth of riding time off that takedown. Sebastian Rivera from right around here, 45 to minutes to an hour south of here, Jackson, New Jersey, Christian Brothers High School. He was a New Jersey state champion, so he's trying to win a Big Ten championship in his home ground. He was third last year and sixth the year before in the NCAA, the two-time All-American at 125. He's gone up to 133, and he was, uh, we call him Seabass, Sebastian Rivera. Seabass was uh, Matt Storniolo, the head coach for Northwestern's first ever recruit, and he took over as the head job, uh, the head man at uh, Northwestern. Yeah, you take a look at why would he be recruiting New Jersey from out from Chicago. Well, New Jersey has one state champion, right, and is state as po well populated is and as much popularity and how many great coaches there are out here in this state that's a significant title and sometimes carries more, a lot more weight than the multiple class states that you see all across the rest of the country california new jersey you know large states that only have one state champion these guys come from wrestling family beautiful right. in on the opportunity again for a takedown just the speed and the angles that RBY is getting to. The opportunity to go ahead and put some weight on his foot right there. Maybe try to get a little bit more tilt action with that. Nope, nothing yet. Looks like Rivera has a pretty decent hold of that leg. Right. RBY has the tricks. He's trying to work for hand control to free up that ankle. Now, a little bit more head elevation by Rivera. If he can get his head up a little bit higher, he's going to be more, more competitive. The referee's got to watch this for potentially dangerous, and I think that's a great call. Great call. I don't want to see anybody get hurt this time of year. Not worth two points. Rivera's dad, Steve, was a Division III NCAA champ at the, city, uh, at the College of New Jersey. But you can see that just the angles and, and the speed that... RBY has gotten his shots, and he's a guy that you don't want to stand too much in front of him. Today's State Farm State of Success.
is Sebastian Rivera for his success at the Big Ten Championships. 125 pound champion last year defeated Spencer Lee in the finals. And here he is. And the finals at 133, but trailing. Two to one as we begin the second period. And how significant that state of success is. He's beaten two national champions, Seth Gross and, and also, I mean, current national champions in the, in the process of doing it. So beating Spencer Lee last year, Seth Gross this year. We knew he had an edge to him. He uh, wrestled up in that duel against uh, Michich last year in, in, uh, with, against Michigan. He's not afraid. He's fearless. And he's tied up now, two to two. A uh, minute 30 left in the second period. What I'm looking for from Rivera at this point is that how, how can he be able, how can he get to that leg that is all taped up right there, that left knee of RBY. He, he was able to go ahead and get to that leg and get some real quality finishes on Seth Gross. And RBY is, is holding the center of the mat. Again, it came out really hard with a you know, blast double and was able to go ahead and follow it up really well. Score points, great scrambles with his speed. Now working off the elbow control. Very tactical match at this point, even with the early takedown of RBY. And, and some guys have, some guys have great defense with their, their head and they, or they get the inside tie and all that, but, but uh, RBY has just great lateral motion in the moment. You feel like you're going at him and he's just like a bullfighter that could go ahead and just, he's not where you think he is. And then he comes back and re-attacks so well. Nice pick there, goes the other direction. Notice how he stayed away from the roll through by RBY, now he's got an opportunity to go ahead and, and, and collect that far leg. Got to be careful with the real estate. Beautiful finish. And Seabass with two with only 15 seconds left. Looking to see if he can score back points. They're going to trap that arm and work for the half. But huge takedown. And if he can ride him out, finish on top at the end of the period. That's the way it's drawn up, isn't it, Jim? Stop. Yeah, but you know what? Collecting those points at the end of a period, you're going to see a look at this beautiful finish. So he's got the leg. He's elbow deep right there on the leg. Good security. All right, he comes up and reaches and lifts it, it, him up and takes him down, gets him up off the ground one time and then changes the direction that the body's gonna fall. Great finish. Bravo Young's only loss of the year to Seth Gross, lost six to five, but the match that we saw, that six to five loss, we knew that Bravo Young was peaking at the right time. All-American last year as a true freshman. Rivera, a two-time All-American, leading four to two and putting on a ride. Really is, and you, you tell that the, there's One, seems to be a, a slight sla size difference. You know, may, maybe Rivera is a tweener, but you know what? He knows how to ride, and his ability to control the hips right now has been fantastic. You hear that big crowd? That's the. Uh, Rutgers faithful getting behind their guys, which they've done Watch all weekend. Yeah, this has been a really uh, engaged crowd. Had a really good first round, got the crowd engaged, and now they've got a wrestler going for fifth at 133. And it's been kind of a rebuilding year for Rutgers. Good no, young wrestlers. No, no, no. And right now, no here's Steve now. Rivera, the champ. The Division Three champ from the College of New Jersey go, cheering on his son, trying to get a Set. second Big Ten Set. championship. Looking to become a champ in Division One for Northwestern here in a couple of weeks good in job Minneapolis. By, yeah, good job, Tim, by, excuse me, by R Rivera. They're coming up and good bat return, and then now he's collecting the, the hip. And he's got that straight right arm in there. All right, a lot of torque on that waistline, and now he's gonna kick, collect hips right there, get a swipe. RBY explodes out of that. No, he's all right, he's all right. And that was just all set up by the mat return. And the riding time goes over a minute. Big ride, there's Dad. Right Reeling here. it. One, not two, that's get the call second, right now. Second. One, not two, you don't want to give up that reversal and let the riding time milk set. back down the right this. So you're gonna put on a decent ride, but you're not gonna go ahead and put the legs in or anything like that. See, still run, still good run, mat still return, run. possibly. Still run. Still run. Oh, wow, committed to two. it. Two, two, two. two 
back points. What a way to finish. Exclamation mark on the job. Well done by Sebastian Sebas Rivera. He wins in his home state. He points to the crowd. He's the Big Ten champion at 133. Stepped up, met the challenge. And like you said, Jim, he came through beating a national champion. And now he is the Big Ten champion. Let's see how he got it done here. Well, I'll tell you what, that answering takedown was beautiful. And you take a look at this job of going to the opposite leg here. He actually took down Seth Gross by attacking the leg with the knee pad. But a beautiful finish right there. Almost takes the RBY to his back. We we'll see Dad's happy. Let's go to Shane, who's with Seabass. All right, Sebastian, you are so slick on your feet. But there's another aspect to your game. You can grind and grit when you have to. Speak to that aspect in that top position. I just want to say, New Jersey! But, um, yeah, man, we work on top a lot. I feel like I'm getting better on top and bottom, and that's where it's going to take me to the next level here, right? Our feet are good. Roman's feet are good. But that top bottom is where we, we drew, the, drew the line. Speak about your mindset. You have that New Jersey swag, that New Jersey confidence. You always expect to win. When was that instilled? Whew, man. Come on, look at this place. Who doesn't want to win in Jersey? Come on, look at this. Every time. It's just Jersey, man. We're a different breed. Always will be. TRNJ all day, baby. Still got more? Uh -huh. Thanks so much. Two-time Big Ten champion, Sebastian Rivera. We're ready for 141 pounds. Have been since the last time they met. Nick Lee from Evansville, Indiana, Penn State. Mitney Lions going up against Luke Pletcher from Latrobe, Pennsylvania. Wrestling for the Ohio State University. The last time they met, Luke Pletcher came out as number one. Nick Lee left the match as number one. Really looking forward to this matchup because, you know, in that match last uh, the, the dual meet that they had, it looked like Pletcher got out there, got the first takedown, and then Lee kind of took the match over and was really dominant in the top position, collected a couple takedowns himself. Really a dominant performance, and he was clearly the number one wrestler after that. But Pletcher's been one of those guys all throughout his career that he's made the adjustments. He's done better at the, at the end of the season. Nick Lee, the skill set that he possesses, you know, to be able to take a guy down, ride a guy, turn a guy. Well, let's that, take that, a look at what you're talking about when they met earlier this year. Yeah, take a look at uh, the effort in the flashback here of this match, okay? Roll Cruz. It would seem like Lee anticipated everything about after about the third minute of the match. And Fletcher, for whatever reason, we know the type of condition that he's in. Lee with a solid win. And Nick Lee came from the number one seat. Came through Chad Red. A good, close match, 7-5. to five. Luke Fletcher comes from the number two. Really hammered Mitch McKee with a major decision. And here they go. Number one and number two again. Just like in the dual mate, but switched around. Who will come out for number one? Because the winner will going into the NCAA championships. And Nick Lee probably had a little bit tougher battle with Chad Red than what Fletcher did getting uh, through. But, you know, now we're at the finals. And high expectations for both these fellas. And uh, one of the big matchups I've been looking forward to the whole weekend. Another one versus two. Here comes Nick Lee, coached by Cale Sanderson in his 11th year at Penn State. 14 points Had a 60 week streak stop this year at Arizona State in November. But Nick Lee has not been beaten at all. Luke Fletcher is only lost to this man right here. Nick Lee. Hey, here we go. Nick Good Lee, luck, gentlemen. Like I said, out of Evansville, Indiana, he won a state championship at Mater Day High School as a junior, but then he was homeschooled as a senior to concentrate on freestyle. He won a junior freestyle national championship. A two-time All-American, Nick Lee, for the Nittany Lion. Fifth as a freshman and fifth as a sophomore. And Tim, I think he's the best in the country, one of the best in the country, at being able to get takedowns and go immediately get into turns and tilts. Now he's in on another shot. No control, right there, you can see the flexibility of Pletcher, but able to work that limp arm out right there at the edge of the mat. And they're going to go off. Action. Two points. Neutral. 
Fletcher ex escaped a danger position. But what he's been what he's been able to do this year to show his dominance is, is very quickly after the takedown, he's getting points. They both like to attack each other's right leg. Nice little spin around effort right there. See that attack on the opposite side leg right there. Can Fletcher score with this? You see the hand control that Lee's tried to implement. Can dumps him down, but now collects the points Two, off down. the spin. That's such a great job of running the pipe and setting him down, just like you said, Jim. Yeah, it's one of those situations where he's able to anticipate one, the spin of Lee and go right back into collecting both, both feet. And sometimes when they hit that spin, if they don't get enough elevation, they really put both legs together, it's easier to collect them. This is where we were the last time they met in the duel mate. Fletcher jumping out in front, and then the Lee train started coming down the tracks. Fletcher, a three-time Pennsylvania state champion from La Trobe, Pennsylvania. He's one of the captains on the nice team. And Lee in on the leg. When you can get in on the leg that clean and not drop your knee on a guy that's as solid as Fletcher, and then anticipate that roll through like Lee did right there. He brought the two points. Good wrestling, good finishes by both guys. What an answer by Nick Lee. The junior going up against the red shirt or the, the senior, neither of these guys ever redshirted. Luke Fletcher wrestled as a true freshman at 141, then he went down to 133, his better weight, was a two-time All-American. There's Tom Ryan, and a look at Cody Sanderson on the right there, the brother of Kale Sanderson, and Casey Cunningham, the two top assistants of Kale Sanderson. Good, good job of Fletcher getting to his feet, but just at the last second, Lee is able to go ahead and hang on, and you know, what, what do we have? Five, six seconds off the clock right there, but those are important restart situations where Lee wants to stay in control in this match. When he was able to go ahead and ride Fletcher, that really made the difference in the match and really made his physical presence felt. And really, I think, he can wear on his opponents as good as anybody in the country. Good hand control, stops it. Notice how he's front tripping every step, uh, step trying to step in front of uh, Fletcher's lead legs. Ohio State corner, Tom Ryan in his 14th year. What an outstanding job. Big Ten Coach of the Year three times. National Coach of the Year twice. One. And neutral. His man Fletcher gets out. 4-1. It's all tied up. 3-3. Three three. 35 seconds left in the first period. The action that we thought we were going to see, Jim. Yeah, I knew that the type of competitor that Fletcher was, that he was going to be able to be held down very long. Three good starts right there. Lee made him work. Let's see if that type of action pays off later in the match, but I think what Lee does was he was able to get in on the leg, had a little head shock action right there, and was able to pick the pick the knee of Lee. Excuse me, pick the knee of Pletcher, trying to do it one more time. Short time. You know, for a, a taller man to be able to get on the leg like this, just beautiful. Here's the finish. Now he just sits back, anticipates that roll through by sprawling his own legs back and collects the far ankle. There's Chris and Laura Lee, Evansville, Indiana, but all their boys are in State College. Young, uh, Nick's younger brother, Joe, is a teammate at Penn State. And Matt, spending his gap year after high school in State College, all living together, supporting each other. It's a family affair for the Lees. Nice shot, low shot there. Lee responds exceedingly well. Again, you see him uh, duck and drop his level right there, but he's able to stay on his feet when he does that, not dropping to a knee. So well timed. Now he's changing the other direction here, almost collects the ankle. What Pletcher's done is he's shown that this is the right weight class for him, Jim. They were wondering, can he come up from 133? He uh, wrestled at this weight approximately at the U23s. Found himself second to Ironman for the world team, and he has certainly established himself. It's the right weight for him this year. Well, he's really having to deal with the assault that the Lee has, the head movement, that the, uh, the, the snap downs, and to be able to kind of shuck sideways and get to a leg and get to a low ankle. Lee has tremendous reach as well. Tremendous, he knows how to use it. Another shot right there. And, oh, 
Angel Barrett calls a stall running on Lee. That's big Penn State contingent here. Not necessarily happy with that. Yeah, and that's by um, rule book uh, that he went out, backed off, and it was an interpretation. Got to call one of three things, either continued action, stalling for pushing out, or for stalling for backing out. It's got to be one of three every time they go out of bounds. He calls stalling. Red, it's the yeah. first Red one. Now a stall Red. call on Pletcher. Both wrestlers have stall calls. Yeah, and I think that's the call that most people saw probably in the crowd is that he attempted, you know, head fakes, the head slaps, the, the shucks, and get, dropping in on the leg, going both directions, and uh, Lee was just rewarded with that stall warning. Both these guys are going pretty hard, but it's a situation where there's no, you know, no points Center. issued here. These guys, this ain't going to be decided by a stall warning. You just mentioned one thing about these two. Pace has always been uh, one, their friend, and you never have to worry about shape for either of these guys. Here's the action that you're talking about, Tim, on the stall call here. Push directly straight out. Yeah, hey, you, you see that action there. Look, yeah, coaches weren't happy with that. And the parents <laughs> uh, weren't happy either. <laughs> I don't blame uh, them. I mean, from a standpoint of being parents, you're never happy when, you're, when it's something goes against your, uh, your wrestling. I just don't think that'll have much play in the match. These guys like to get after. They're looking for offense. And right now, you know, Pletcher's the guy that, that really has to st step up and get to a leg and get to a shot. That's what his game is. Neither of these wrestlers make a lot of mistakes, and they punish you if you make a mistake. Both guys working heavy on the head, right? This is more of a, of a Pletcher situation here where he gets a little bit tighter in closer, where he can go ahead and get a little bit more penetration step. Lee working out in distance, I think that favors him. So working notice how he's down. snapping. He's not going ear to ear with his opponent. Now straight on double, drops back in. Boy, this footwork of, of Pletcher has been fantastic. He stepped out of several low shots. And that was a deep double he had. And he had yeah. a wall with Lee. Yeah. And, and both of these guys are like walls from a standpoint of being attacked on. Heavy possession now. This is what thinks Pletcher's really good at. Brought his hips to the party on that double leg. The takedown and the escape. Now, Pletcher out in front, six to five. No riding time advantage. Still too early to shut it down with 39 seconds left here for Pletcher. You got it, Lee, who now has to come into the action. He has to go ahead and force his ties and foul Pletcher working for a little more space. Really hanging heavy on that head. Got drops attack. back in, yeah, drops back in on the shot. Is he got his shoulder too far to the outside? Oh, no. Out of bounds. Out of bounds. Oh. Neutral. Hey, back up, coaches. Hey. We'll pop you on the knee. Okay, let's go. He let's says, go. I'm all right. We go back to the center. Let's go, let's go, let's and here go. they come. 13 seconds left. Pletcher cannot be hit for stalling. He's got to move forward. He's got a stall warning. It would tie it up if he is called for stalling. Fletcher's got the lead. He's trying to hold on for a Big Ten championship. Boy, what a response by Luke Fletcher. Luke Fletcher comes back from the defeat in the dual meet. Starts with a takedown, finishes the job this time. Tom Ryan, happy with his senior captain, black shirt. We'll talk about that later. He's just an all-around top wrestler and a Big Ten champion now, Luke Fletcher. You take a look at that winning takedown. He drops his level here, answers, brings his hips up in onto the lift here, sags back down to the lower part of the legs, finishes the takedown. Wow, Tom Ryan, another Big Ten champion for Ohio State. Let's go to Shane with Luke. All right, Luke, that match, the battle as we would expect. What were some of the key adjustments you made against Lee in comparison to that dual meet? Uh, staying, staying in my position, keep attacking where I want to be, and don't let him dictate the pace. You've recently spoke about your development mentally, not always having that self-belief. How have you been able to get to where you are now? Uh, a lot of work. A lot of work. That's all I can say. A lot of work. NCAA championships less than a couple of weeks away. You've been an All-American a couple of times. What gives you reason for optimism? Your final ride. The work, just like I just said, I work as hard as I possibly can every day. 
uh, to make sure that I'm ready to rip and uh, I'm feeling good. Luke Pletcher, Big Ten champion for Ohio State at 141. Sammy Sosa, Sasso, a freshman, going up against the senior, Pat Lugo. Everybody was waiting for Sammy Sasso to come out of his registered gear. And they met in Iowa City. It was a great match here, Pat Lugo, and you take a look at Lugo seemed to be in on good positions all throughout the course of the match. He almost was able to take uh, Sasso down in this position, but watch that elevation right here. It's going to elevate the inside leg and cut the bottom leg through here and get square. Sasso has just been a magician in being able to stop guys from being able to score on them. They're almost 99% the way there, almost a cradle locked in this position. He fights this one off with the flexibility, brings his head uh, hand over the top of the head right now, right at the end of the match here. That's where they go into overtime here, but Sasso was a bit of a magician. The only loss of the year for Lugo has been against Sammy Sasso and Carver. And Sasso is the number one seed for that win. He comes through. Hard fought win over Yaya Thomas from Northwestern in the first round. Then he throws a shutout against Kanan Store. Lugo comes up from the second seed. Beats us game break and lead, and here they are in the championship. We've had three weight classes, three champs from three different schools. Well, one school is going to get their second Big Ten champion as the Ohio State University Buckeyes go against up the Iowa Hawkeyes, Sammy Sasso. Again, no takedown in the last match between these two. Here you see hey, Pat Lugo luck, sporting the uh, Sorensen Strong bandana. Of course, supporting, supporting their teammate, uh, Brandon Sorensen, who is, is diagnosed with acute lymphoblastic leukemia in Don't November join us, on right? Thanksgiving weekend. And what support that four-time All-American for the Hawkeyes is getting from this wrestling. We wish him the best as he watches his teammates go for the Big Ten Championship. We're thinking of you, praying for you, there you go. and love you, Come on in, Brandon Sorensen. And now, his weight on, class, 149, that he manned for Iowa. Pat Lugo has had the last two years since Works transferring out, from Edinburgh, from Homestead, Florida, was a two-time state champion at South Dade High School. Stay right there and work. Don't come out Went of that through set. Edinburgh, where he was a round of 12 guy, but never an All-American, but got on the podium last year for the Hawkeyes. And he's showed up this season, you know, prepared and ready for the beginning of the season, which I think was a little bit of an adjustment here coming into the Iowa program. Love watching Pat Lugo work off that left-handed underhook right there. He does a great job Stay with that. Head, That's how gentlemen. some of the offense he was able to create in that match. Look for him to live in that position as much as possible. He does a great job of working the head. Really a tough out when he decides not to get scored on. Lugo, Action. I mean, he's he can be, you know, devastating. And what's improved, I think, in his game over the course of this season has been his ability in the top position. Sasso is just a gamer and a, and so a winner. Work with that. And a guy who's been used to winning in the high school level. Tremendous flexibility, mad awareness, can go up top with you, can attack below the knee, and just tremendous defense. He says, I want to bring the heat every time. I want to be a dog and score points. He's out of the tough Nazareth, Pennsylvania, Lehigh Valley area where wrestling's been a way of life for years and years and years. Well, he's the teammate that you want to take on the road trip with you. He's not going to be intimidated by any environment. That, that uh, trip that they took to Carver, they went from there to Minnesota and uh, picked up a win against uh, uh, Brayden Lee in a hostile environment. Again, he loved having those teammates that are not going to go out there and Work be center, intimidated. The youngsters out there battling with the toughest guys in the country. And that this is great position for Lugo with that double underhook. Let's see if he works that. off of it. He's able to shrug it by. He's able to get the takedown right there. Great execution by Pat Lugo for the first score. Got that double underhook. Was able to shrug it right by. Again, didn't settle for just one. Got both of them and, and able to go ahead and Still attack in. at the hips and not be able to, you know, not messing around with below the knee where, where Sasso can you know, be flexible and, and get out of those positions. And I think you mentioned it, but Lugo has really improved on his finishing skin no this last center. year. Yeah, no Ohio question about it. Out. He's improved at all levels, particularly the top position and, and, and also with those finishes. And, you know, 45 seconds left. I'm he's well coached. He is well coached because 
what do you do with the guy that can scramble and roll around Set, with you? You don't attack right, below easy. the knee. You go right at the hips, and that's what, no, he, that that's what he did off. That's the adjustment that he made. You're down. And uh, well done. Wait for the whistle. It's a game of inches Cover with up, these I two. And uh, the first score by Lugo is a big, big deal. Now you Is talked about the other place that, that he good? has right, improved on. on his Easy. on top here already 25 seconds of riding time a lot of pressure covering the fingers good work there that is the difference but he looks like Sammy lost his footing there right at the edge of the mat he wants to work himself back in fight hands and being able to get out, quick break, escapes break, 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 break. has been the factor and how he was able to win in overtime. He got the ride That's out right. in the last match. 26 seconds, guys. Again, with 26, 26 seconds, seconds left, you're going you to forego a stall warning here out, if, you, if, if you're, if you're Lugo. Cover, of course, you don't want to get one, but you want to stay in the top position. Warnings for points is a good exchange. Good mat return by Lugo. Sammy coming back up to his feet. Trying to keep some hip separation. Big, big score and ride out for the first period. Ending the period on top. Out, break, 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 break. Wow. Yeah, they're gonna go off the mat with three, three seconds, seconds left. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you notice how he's sealing his down. chest to those, 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 uh, the, the lower part of his three back and his down. hips on those mat three returns. Again, he's a little bit you're on. Shorter than his opponent, so we do that pretty easily, but he's really tight. Break. Yeah, let's take a look at the Lugo takedown here from the double underhook Break. here. Now he gets that position, Defers. chucks it Break. by, but gets tight to the hips and keeps working. And, and uh, almost like a uh, his footwork there was almost like a fencer. Down. There's dad and mom. Patricio right, and Julie. Julie, bottom get right. Patricio. I'm gonna tell you when to get on it. Pat State. Lugo, his namesake, that's his name as well. And Patricio has a set of guns. Okay. Boy, that's some nice looking <laughs> biceps I'm there, give man. You time to get set. Let's go. <laughs> looking good. Matching Put it on here. On tattoos there and a family tradition coming up from Florida by way of Edinburgh and been a Hawkeye now for three years, a red shirt year. And two at this weight class, 149. And so a brick has been thrown in this match, and it looks like uh, Kurt Frost and Joe Tauber, the head official, or the lead official here on this situation. And the point of emphasis this season is that the outside official can make calls, and they're going to go ahead and, and offer up a caution, I believe. Yeah, no brick. They, yeah. they kept them from throwing it because the officials made the... Uh, call okay. themselves and so it's a caution We're I think good? it was at the yeah. hand on the elbow and Sasso may not have had, had the hand on the elbow and, and, and that's what time. that side official is supposed to be doing is looking at the uh, get a good angle as to what the uh, caution may be and so he's going to go over and explain that call to uh, Ohio State corner to say take a look at that restart Yeah, he wasn't on the elbow, on the right elbow right there. You get, your right hand has to be on the right elbow there if you're going to get off on the right side. Good, good catch by outside official Kurt Frost. Ryan Morningstar give time. pointing to what happened. Kurt Frost saw it. Uh, now there's a caution on Pat Lugo. Jump the gun. Each wrestler with one caution. You get two before you're assessed a point. I like what Lugo's doing there, though. See how he's keeping his elbows in and his wrists out, right? Gonna You're going to block down those okay. pockets between your, right, your thigh and, and your tricep. Make it difficult for a leg to come in. See how that right leg's coming in? And you can just tell a little, uh, uh, you know, scouting, closing down those windows as we talk about with your techniques that, that where you've seen the wrestler before, you look at the film. Sasso now has that near leg hook. That's where he likes to live. A lot like the claw, and he likes to get that claw like Gross does. And he also comes over the top with that right knee. See that right knee coming over the top? And Lugo 
working hard to, to cover fingers, okay? Both you can cover working. fingers four at a time in this sport and peel them off. But this is a good, good work here by Sasso. He's already amassed about 20. Actually bringing the riding time right. down. Yeah, so. Both men working. Down to 20. They're still in. Good, tough ride by Sammy Sasso, the red shirt freshman. He's also a black shirt. Only four on no, the go team. Go back in, no change. Bring her down. And they give the black shirt to some wrestler who has been consistent, a competitor in all of life. They bring it every day to the mat, the classroom, and socially. Like Tom Ryan says, Get they're that. a savage oh, in life. And yeah, there's Fletcher that. and Moore, Sasso, and Evan Smith, I know, have received the black shirt this year in the Buckeye room. That's yeah, Sasso trying to sag back down around the corner there. Lugo is almost on his feet, but you can see the great job that he was able Both to go working. ahead and just kind of swing around like you're swinging, holding on to a merry-go-round in that situation. This Drops is quite an hips. answer yeah. right here by Sasso as far as the ride on top, the pressure carrying his weight. Yeah, and if you see what he's doing, he's now he's sagging over, now a decent mat return, now you catch him on his hip, and now you're in business so maybe to close out the period. Not much real estate to work with. If you're coaching Sasso, you want to, uh, want, uh, Lugo, you want him to get a new start. My call on that was always ditch it, ditch it, ditch it, right? And then the cradle, and I'll tell you what, with Jay Jaggers in the corner in the room every day, you want to watch out for any of his wrestlers that slap the cradle on. And he does a fantastic job of, of teaching that technique, but good oh, answering period here for okay, Sasso. Sure, Take a look at Mr. March here for the Buckeyes, a guy that didn't always get it done during the regular season, but uh, two-time NCAA champion oh, on your left there, Jay Jaggers. Gentlemen, third period scores 2-0. You've got 48 seconds riding Mr. time Mr. March. <laughs> I think you'd like that. All right, get set, Ohio State. I'm going to tell you when to get on, you understand? All right, Sammy Sasso goes down set. underneath. Let's go, easy. And after the takedown early by Pat Lugo, Lugo was able to ride out the period, get more than a minute of riding time. Now that's all gone after Sasso rode for two minutes of the second period. Like I said, this is a game of inches between these two. Sasso on his feet, working hard. Able to come with the wizard. Really doesn't make too much difference. The riding time coming down. Lugo coming hard and staying with it. They're gonna one point escape there for Sasso. I'm gonna look at it. They're going to go look. He called the one. Iowa corner does not like the call. They believe that Pat Lugo still had the underhooks and the and the lock. I think he did too. I th 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 my impression from this angle was that he was all the way around the waist with that, R around the backbone. That's what you're, you're guiding that. So, yep. You're down. Free Joe Toppy took a quick look at it and put uh, Sasso back down. It's a great so, call. No escape. Get set. Point off the board. 2-0, still the score. You're on, Riding Iowa. time not in effect right now. A minute and a half left in regulation. The top man, the Hawkeye, Pat Lugo, leads 2-0. If he had a takedown and a ride out in the first period. Sasso had a ride out in the second period. Now he's trying to get out and score his first points of the match. Well, he, what he, what he, he wants to keep him down as long as possible. So he's going to get warned for stalling and also collect the points. So that's kind of a bad sequence there for Lugo. The because a, a now a stall warning will tie the match. So a warning on Lugo for stalling and the escape by Sasso. One minute, but These are the th things, Tim, that you, you drill on in championship wrestling. You want to go out there and win a championship. You've got to decide what's going to be your go-to technique down by one against tough wrestlers. And it could, could be a Lugo digging for his Both underhooks. Again, too early for him to shut down his offense. He might 40. find the ideal technique and ideal feel. It's a great time to get on his offense while Sasso's trying to figure out what he's doing. 30 seconds left. You talked about it. What's Sasso's go-to move here? The end of the regulation, down two to one. Take down on a right out would win. Neutral. Hips defense by Lugo, fends off the attack by Sasso. Runs that underhook. Working, the left-handed underhook working. is his friend in this situation. Sasso drops Neutral. back in, settles back. Neutral. Neutral. Trying to finish it off. Doesn't have much time. Neutral. Neutral. 
I think no points. Well, they, they're obviously, Quick. well, Tim, they're going to basically see if there was a count there because he was past 90 for at least two seconds. And it has to be three to get the points. So referees will take a look at this position. And I don't even think that they'll have to, I think they wanted to do it anyway. And looking at the danger zone, whether uh, he should have gotten two for being in the danger zone. A great finish here by Sasso as he creates a little bit of hip separation with the turn, right? And one, two. I, I think he was has a case for looking at that as past. Got to be past 90 degrees for three seconds. You can make a case for it there, there, and there. Call confirmed. And your Big Ten champion, the second Hawkeye to win a championship today, Pat Lugo, avenges his Take only hands, loss of the well year done. to Sammy Sasso. Great fight. Well, Pat Lugo, the Big Ten champion. Yeah, two, two, uh, you gotta be happy for Lugo and the effort that he put in there. Let's take a look at the winning takedown that he was able to get in the first period. Again, off that double underhook. The adjustment that he made, he didn't want to go low, attack the hips, right? His drive through, rotate the upper body, drive through, shuffles his feet, attacks. That was the difference. And Patricio's awful happy. And let's go to young Patricio, who's with Shane. All right, Pat, you don't play wrestle. It's a fight in front of the world. Where was that fight won? On my feet and a little bit of scrambling at the end. She never got it there. She never give up that stall call. But you know, at the end of the day, I got my hand raised. That's what matters most. You're a Big Ten champion. You've had a phenomenal season, just the one loss. Now you've avenged it. What have you learned about yourself this season? I learned that wrestling is 90% mental. You know, you could be the best guy in shape at your weight class, but if you don't got that mentality going into your match, you're gonna get tired real quick. So, um, strong mentality. Yeah. Congratulations. Pat Lugo gives the Hawkeyes their 202nd Big Ten individual title. Ready for 157 pounds. Purdue's Kendall Coleman. Northwestern's Ryan Deacon. Ryan Deacon, number one in everybody's book. He's a junior, he's undefeated. Going up against the freshman, Kendall Coleman, who's having quite a year. Kendall Coleman, start. Coleman got there by coming from the three spot, beating Peyton Robb in a very close match to go to the finals. Ryan Deacon, not much problems coming through from the number one spot, Van Brill and Michigan's Luan. Number one, Deacon versus Kendall Coleman. Coleman started 15-0, Jim, and that's the best start for a freshman in P Purdue history. Real real nice uh, freshman year. Well, we're going to get to see this young man a lot in, in his, what will end up being a storied career for the Boilers. He's got the, the, the talent. He's got the beautiful freight train double, but he can also slick you, you know, with the getting shots at the opposite side and, you know, changing up his offense. He does come off of his knees quite a bit there with his techniques, which makes him difficult to score on. Ryan Deacon, I think he's the strongest wrestler in the tournament. I mean by strong, he grabs something and he grabs a tie or a head, a power, his range. He, he, he just, everybody that he wrestles feels his strength. And he's been putting up eight to nine uh, points per uh, match. And that's uh, that's been his MO all year, be able to ride in the top position. But it's just so physical. And his, his defense is solid. Just, you know, it has improved immensely here. He gets to a leg. It's just he controls everything, pops the head up in the right position, controls, seals his chest to the hips. Just beautiful stuff. The only time they met, Ryan Deacon got a major decision over hey, Kendall Coleman, 14-0. So he picks up where he left off from the dual meet. Legal. Kendall Coleman, a redshirt Legal. freshman out of South Hall Holland, Legal. Illinois, Mount Carmel High School. He's a three-time Illinois High School Break. place winner, Three finishing as a runner-up twice and placing fifth, never winning a state championship. Here he is as a freshman in the Big Ten Championships. Ryan Deacon out of Broomfield, Colorado. 
Won a state championship for Legacy High School in 2014 when he was 45 and 0. But he's got one thing in mind right now. He won the Cliff Keen Las Vegas tournament earlier in the year, and he's looking for one thing to be on the top of the podium today one, and in two, two weeks. And he's worked himself in that position to be clearly a, the, the number one seed. And, and depending on how this match goes, and he's off to a kind of a Ryan Deacon start. Early takedown, and hammers guys in the top position, gets them tired. You know, this weight class at 157 is going to be really interesting. Will Luan from Michigan's back. You've got, you know, Kendall Coleman here that you see, and you've got, uh, you know, Caleb Young was number two seed in this weight class, a junior. You've got uh, Peyton Robb, from, uh, the freshman from uh, uh, Nebraska. Ryan Thomas from Minnesota is pretty good-looking, young 57-pounder. Uh, a lot of depth in this weight class going forward. I don't know where Anthony Echimedia is going to land, but it could be at 157, and he was accepted into the Ohio State University, the uh, young champion that uh, came from Cuba. Great story. Was at the same high school that uh, RBY is from at Sunnyside and has now been accepted. He hopes to join the Ohio State team um, come uh, this next year as a freshman. Greg, warning. Warning on, on Coleman in the down position. Again, pretty much a parallel ride. <laughs> that is, uh, it's just tough to get out of that when the guy breaks you down. It's so easy to hold the guy down and, and, and a nice uh, return call there with the stalling in the top position. I like that answer. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're totally parallel on top of a guy like that. You don't really, you're not really working a tilt and you're at 180 degrees with your opponent. You, uh, you know, as long as the, head, the opponent has his head off the mat, I mean, there's techniques that you have to learn at college wrestling now to be able to get off your belly. And if you can't, you really look bad. Nice start there by Coleman, doing a good job of fighting and fighting at the edge. Short time. End of the first period, Deacon, a strong takedown and ride. Yeah, look at this shot when he gets into it, but look how he, he keeps a hold of that leg. That's two arms going against one leg right there. It doesn't happen very often where you can actually control that. There's Paul and Emily Deacon all the way from the Rocky Mountains to the Jersey Shores to watch their son hopefully win a Big Ten title. Proud moments. Northwestern with two finalists. Purdue with two finalists. Northwestern already with a champion. Sebastian Rivera at 133. Purdue. Schroeder came up short against Lee, but a strong foundation being set by Tony Ursland in his sixth year at Purdue. Yeah, I agree with you when you're saying that. I mean, they had a nice recruiting class about five years ago, and uh, they're one of those teams, you know, fifth in the Big Ten, and right behind Penn State, maybe about 17 points behind them. That's down pretty well. Now you see the ability of Coleman there with that nice little shuck by. He's in a beautiful high crotch position on the crackdown. Again, is the strength of Deacon taking over? My guess is yes. No points yet. Got the leg hooked on top. Coleman no. wisely just kind of keep in position. Recognizes that he's not necessarily going to be able to score in here, but if he does try to move out of that position, he might give up the point. So, wise choice on his part. Head official, Kirk Frost, bringing them back to the center. We talk about Purdue Northwestern. They're number five and six right now in the 14-team Big Ten uh, race here, and uh, that's really representing your, your, your school in this tournament when you finish fifth and sixth. Wow, beautiful job by Coleman warding off that shot 99% of the way there. Looks like we're going to have a review on that position, but I just think Coleman just reacted so quickly before Deacon got on top of him. It's going to be a tough one to overturn. Northwestern uses one of their two remaining team challenges left. And let's take a look at how active Coleman was fighting this off, okay? So anticipates the uh, comes back on him. You know, he, he, I, 
I thought he I thought he did a good job of moving out of that. Nice look. You're looking for the criteria. And I guess there could have been weight on the hands there when they went down. And the call is confirmed. No takedown. And that's uh, one less challenge for Northwestern. But why not? They're yeah. with their last wrestler in the finals here. In college wrestling, you get reaction time on, on, on every, almost every position on a takedown except for the, that vertical position when they you know, slide by it and, and the hands kind of graze the mat. And there's two points down. If the hand grazes the mat right there, they'll, they'll give the two. two nice right. job by Deacon once right. again on that single leg shot. But how about the effort of, you know, of, of Kendall Coleman there? You keep on putting that type of effort out there in the down position, even in a match that's like 5-0 right now, short time in the second period, you're going places in this in this uh, conference and in the nation. Frank, green's down. You know, we just got so, seeing a great example of that with, you know, Luke Pletcher. Got the quick escapes. Had to work really hard to get him and then found himself in a position to be able to. But that's how you got to battle in, in, in college wrestling. One if you get taken down, there's nothing wrong getting taken down, but you got to fight that, like heck to get back up and, and cover those points. And that's how Deacon has gotten to where he's at. He's a, he's a fighter and he's in a position now as the number one seed, the number one wrestler. Tim, what I think we see from Deacon is a guy who is now, you know, he'd win a lot of matches, 3-2, uh, you know, 5-3, that type of thing. But he's but, uh, already got two minutes of riding time. He's got five points on the board, technically maybe six points, but he's still looking for his offense and just going out there and scoring and keep scoring. Watch your hands, guys. Watch your hands. I think he's finding out that, that, that the more he does that, he recognizes that he's one of the strongest guys out there. And that was a t that's exact position right there where there's weight on the hands on that slide hands, by. Guys. So there wasn't any reaction time offered up, and good two points there for Kendall Coleman. I like the, the way he's Gentlemen, wrestling as, as a youngster in this league. Freshman there, and Tony Ursuline in the background. Look at the quickness though, with with 113 against the number one ranked wrestler in the country. Clean guys. You're exactly right. He's the consensus number one wrestler in the country by all polls, by every ranking. Ryan Deacon, undefeated in duels. He's a style matchup problem. Kendall Coleman is beautiful straight on double leg right there. And Deacon was fifth layer last year. This is it. He was an All-American last year at um, finishing sixth in the NCAAs, fifth in the Big Tens. And we could talk about that all day where anybody that's finishing sixth, fifth, or fourth could end up finishing higher in the NCAA. That's the toughness of this conference. It happens every year, doesn't it? Yeah, just this... Uh, I, I was impressed with Coleman when I saw him in the duel earlier this year. And I, I'm, I'm more impressed with him today, wrestling Deacon, and that, that he's just getting after it, looks looks fresh and explosive. All the way through a seven-minute match against the number one guy, ranked guy in the country, and it actually is, with his speed, has kind of shut Deacon down. But, you know, Deacon's the best in the, in the, in the country right now, and... Head and shoulders, I think. But you're right about that. Last time, 14-0. This time, 7-2. Stepped in there, game. But Ryan Deacon gives Max Toniolo, the two-time All-American himself, in his fourth year at Northwestern, his second Big Ten champion. Take a look at Ryan Deacon doing some work right there with that single leg finish that, that tells you how quick he was at the beginning of the match we saw the speed of Kendall Coleman he was able to get in on these shots to be able to anticipate yes, score to and, and the it. parents love it crowd and the champs with Shane all right Ryan two years ago you were sixth last year fifth now you're gonna stand atop the podium as a Big Ten champion what's been the difference in your progression uh, I think just working every day trying to get better uh, yeah have some great coaches, great teammates, so it's a great learning environment. 
What are you most proud of in the way you performed and competed this weekend? Um, I think trying to get to my offense and, you know, getting ready for the big show. Congratulations, Northwestern second Big Ten champion. Nice job. Thank you. And we're at 165, and we all can't wait. Vincenzo Joseph, two-time NCAA champion, three-time finalist, undefeated, going up against the two-time All-American Alex Marinelli and last year's Big Ten champion. And we took a look at their three previous meetings here. It's all about this position here with the over and under inside trip. And here you see the dual meet back in 2018. And the bull was able to go ahead and put him down off that inside tri trip. Same thing, scramble situation. This time, Joseph works for the inside trip. Marinelli anticipates it, sets himself back. And then now the adjustment by Marinelli, excuse me, by, by Joseph here, going with the lateral drop off that inside position. And, you know, it's a six-point swing either way when these guys line up in that position. And Joseph comes through the number one seed through a tough game. Isaiah White, he's in a championship. Alex Marinelli comes from the number two seed, has no problems. Evan Wick did not compete, stepped on the mat. Um, medical forfeit. Evan Wick, the third seed, did not compete, hoping to get an uh, a, um, at-large bid. And that would have made... Marinelli's side tougher, but uh, they're both here as anticipated. Well, I'm looking for the adjustments, Tim, and uh, the, the, the big thing adjustment to me is is that is the Iowa coaching staff going to want Alex Marinelli to be able to lock up in that position because that's that that over and under position, inside trip. The Vincenzo Josephs won two NCAA titles uh, in that position with against Isaiah Martinez, and it's like. You know, have we have we uh, exhausted the, the fire in that position, or or, or do we want us to still continue to play Work with it? it and I think he's going to get keep himself in a really low stance, like he's doing right now, and force Joseph to do just what he did right there, get to a leg and fight it off. An underhook there by Marinelli saves from a nice shot from Chenzo. Yeah, and I think that that's the, that's that's the strategy. I think at this point, see if. Vincenzo Joseph can get under Marinelli's head hands defense and make it a tougher, tighter match. So a lot of those inside trip and these, these big move positions may get shut down. It's just the adjustments that the coaches will make. You see Marinelli looking for the underhooks, not going overhooks. Yeah, but he's got, see, he throws his hips way back like that. Even though he has the advantage position, that's where, you know, look how relaxed that, that Joseph's right hand is right there. He's looking for that inside trip. If you and see if Marinelli's backed out of it. I, ju I just, I'm just wagering that that, uh, that at least early in the match, Marinelli's making the decision. I don't want to play with that. I could think I could go ahead and do this through leg attacks. Vincenzo Joseph out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Central Catholic High School was a two-time state champion, but he's also a two-time NCAA champion. First Nittany Lion to ever win NCAA titles as both a freshman and a sophomore. It's so upset last year by Micaiah Lewis, the freshman who is taking an Olympic redshirt year this year. And so he did not get his third title, Chenzo, last year. Got second, looking to try to become a three-timer. Well, these wrestlers are just, there's so much you like about both of these guys. The, the ability to, uh, you know, first of all, go the whole seven minutes hard with good attacks and, and a variety of skills. Both wrestlers can attack both sides of the body. And... They can also ride tough, get out when they need to. The windows have closed down. Like we said before, not spending a lot of time in that inside trip positions. One, one of these guys was going to make that decision. This is an advantage for me, and it looks like uh, the scoreless first period. Work through it. And that's the end of the first. Thanks, Look at this beautiful shot there by Joseph. Gets in on the legs and hips of Marinelli right digs hard for that underhook right there see how he's digging hard with that left-handed underhook and throws him off down easy. very strong yes, wrestler sir. Marinelli for the Hawkeyes chooses down he's a red shirt junior out of St. Paris Ohio Graham High School oh and he's a four-time state champion in Ohio Marinelli got his hips a little bit low there was reaching across and here's where I think Joseph has really upped his game this season He's in the top position. See if he can scoop. Uh, then he'll stay on, with Nitro! it. 
And the escape from Marinelli. First point on the board for the Hawkeye. Marinelli's loss to Chenzo was his first Big Ten loss in his career in the in Carver Hawkeye Arena. First Big Ten dual meet loss. Said, I'm, I'm looking at the elevation of both these wrestlers. Looks like you know Marinelli likes to in distance. He likes to go ahead and get his hands down low on the mat. So. Marinelli backing out of that lock position. Mar uh, Joseph looking to get the shot off, come up to a, a lock, and, and Marinelli didn't want much of that position. But I'm looking at the elevation, both guys' heads. It's hard to see when they get ear to ear, but it's clear that Joseph likes to be a little bit higher in his stance than what Marinelli does. And uh, so he jacks him up. And here's the part of the match where it starts to, you know, staying in that low position, forcing Joseph to go low and underneath you. I think that's exactly what Joseph has to do, is how he faded away there, made Marinelli reach and, and, and step into the shot. Short time in the second period. 10 seconds left, it's 1-0 Marinelli with his quick escape, and there's a drive, and there's that left underhook again. <laughs> Did I just wow. watch a replay? Yeah. He just dug it a little harder that time. And Victor and Sandy Joseph. Victor watching Sandy not like she has for three years. That's a familiar uh, look uh, with uh, Sandy. She can't watch. Victor tells her what's going on. Matt, nice mat return. But not really committed to Marinelli making a decision to try to win this on the feet. Come up, here's the position. And there's uh, the O from the crowd yeah. and the break. <laughs> I, I'm looking at that. Are they really going to do this one more time? But that, 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 that critical moment here, uh, Marinelli oh. let go of his hands and kind of slid out of that. And it's, it's just wisdom. Wisdom. You heard the crescendo. The crowd was going, whoa. Let's listen into the crowd on this replay. Says it all. Yeah, says it all. They knew it was coming. <laughs> they are a knowledgeable crowd, and they know what's coming, and they know who the two wrestlers are out there on the mat. Alex Marinelli getting some blood taken care of. There's no injury time for blood time. So you, you ask yourself, what type of shot is going to win this thing, or what, what type of situation is, is going to win it? it? It's still up for grabs. So. You know, Marinelli... Hold on, gentlemen. Yeah. Marinelli likes to attack to that uh, the left leg of Joseph, and Joseph pretty much keeps that back. When, he, when Marinelli really needs to score, he's going to go ahead and work hard for that. He dropped in on that one. A little bit tighter grip there. Oh, there he got. Oh, nice reaction there by both guys. So they got in it, but no points. Both these guys, they execute when they're tired. There is no tired in these guys. It's one to one, and we have a minute left in regulation. Tim, I was waiting for each guy to just slap the hand. Hey, good job of getting out of there. Hey, good throw, you know? <laughs> That's awesome. A little more blood time there. I know someone else is probably having a hard time watching. That's Alex Marinelli's wife, Mariah. Got locked up again one more time. We're going to let the crowd speak for it. <laughs> and there's Victor and Sandy uh, coming. Talk uh, about the windows opening and closing, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> Sandy's Our, windows are closed most of the time. The rack doing color. <laughs> it's awesome. It's just a sequence here. Joseph likes to get in. Notice how he's, he's loose with that right elbow. And Marinelli decides to break out action, of it. Action, action. He's not going action. over hooks. He's, he's yeah. digging in for those underhooks. Yeah. Ankle pick, slide by situation. It's just really tough for anybody to get that left handed underhook and work with it. But 
I really think that Marinelli is going to shoot to the back leg at some point in time on this. And then Vincenzo Joseph, is he's, he, he wants to attack the right leg of Marinelli. He's gotten there two times. Crossed it up there. He got it. He, he got it. The two points with 10 seconds left. Crossed him up. One point escape. It's three to two. No time left. Marinelli wins a second Big Ten title. And the two time NCAA champion, Vincenzo Joseph, is shut out from being a Big Ten champion in his career. What an exciting match, though. You're not going to see many 3-2 three, three, matches that are better than that one. How about this one? He crossed me up on this, okay? Goes ahead, shoots to that side. That's actually the side I thought he would go to right there. Came across with a little Bazigar finish. And his wife, Mariah, the director of Ops for Hawks, she reacts, yes. Tom Ryan says... That's what we like, and we like Shane, who's with the champ. All right, Alex, anytime you guys get together, everybody's entertained. Once again, you don't disappoint. Walk us through your mindset in those over-under over -under positions when you guys are going to let it fly. I mean, Tom said, if it's there, take it. And it, I don't know, it kind of wasn't there, but uh, stuff happened, and you roll with it, and, you know, you come out on top, so... You guys have wrestled four times. Speak about the respect that you have for Vincenzo Joseph. Yeah, I think uh, in that past duel me, I didn't respect him enough in that over-under position. And now when I'm there, it's better, better be there or I'm getting out of it. So good luck in Minneapolis. Yeah, thank you. Alex Mirinelli, two-time Big Ten champion. Go Hawks, baby. Michael Kemmer, ranked number one versus Mark Hall, ranked number two. The last time they met, they were one and two the other way. And Mark Hall was upset in Iowa City. That's his only loss to this man, Michael Kemmer. Take a look at the matchup here between these two guys in the duel. And Michael Kemmer, just a straight line, linear wrestler. You can see how he's moving forward all the time, right? Dropping in. You know, Mark Hall has a nice duck under, wide square stance here. Gets a lot of offense, scores off other people's uh, shots. Beautiful cradle setup. Good with upper body. You know, it's just a great style matchup between two ferocious competitors. And here's how they got here. Number one seed, Michael Kemmer, coming through pretty darn easy to the championship line. Mark Hall got packed a very tough Dylan Whitey from Purdue and is in the championship for the rematch. Kemmer versus Hall, one versus two. Here we go. Well, the one thing that was that's different about the last match is that that the emotions of that duel at that point at Penn State, Iowa, were just just off the off the charts. These two are coming into probably an equal emotional state right now, where where Mark Hall just came out in the last match like he's fired out of a cannon here. Came with hard double underhooks and hit a beautiful throw, but he actually threw too throw. hard and put Kimmerer past his back, and it rolled into Fingers. a neutral. Get out of that grip. Or he just didn't Fingers. get the back points on the position, but now he gets in on a leg on Kimmerer. See if Kemmerer can, uh, what happens here? Now he's going to work back up. No control. Ankle pass situation for both wrestlers. Advantage here for Hall. He's got his head up in this position. Can no he go control. ahead and free his leg out? Keeping his balance. Working back into no control. Hall, and he collects the points. So a quick takedown for Mark Hall. Six-time state champion out of Apple Valley, Minnesota. The first to ever win six titles in Minnesota. And the one thing I noticed about that duel, that Mark Hall was on his feet the whole time, cheering his teammates on. He was in every uh, emotional moment of that highly emotional duel meet. And uh, we know that uh, he's a cool customer, the three-time NCAA finalist. Neutral, we're neutral. Much calmer approach to this match. Three-time finals, he won the NCAAs as a freshman, has been second the last two years. He's a two-time Big Ten champion. Also, he's the 2016 Dave Schultz Excellence Award, one of the nation's most storied high school careers. World champion as a cadet. Michael Cameron out of Marysville, Pennsylvania, Franklin Region High School, same high school as Spencer Lee, or teammates, Eric Mosser, the head coach and both these guys are big team guys especially 
you know, Mark Hall, Cameron may be a little bit more of a quiet leader with Spencer Lee in, in the lineup kind of being the face of the program, but Mark Hall, you know, who I, I can't forget in my mind here the, the time that Bo Nickel got that pin in the finals, and the first guy that, that was so out there to that. congratulate him that. here was his teammate Mark Hall after he lost in the previous match uh, in the national Fingers. finals. I mean, he's a team guy, loves his program, and, and uh, you watch this guy off the mat, you have nothing but respect for him. You look at Michael Cameron, Go guys, and that body score. looks, oh, every bit of a 174 pounder. But what people Stay don't know chain. is he was a two-time All-American at 157 two and three years ago. Took a redshirt year last year, medical redshirt year, was injured. And um, he's hoping to get a sixth year. He's a senior, but he's a petition for a sixth year because Stop. he lost an entire season to injury. Well, what we're seeing on display is the Great wisdom of, of, of Hall sure coming hurt. out here, relaxed, go got on his attack, right go didn't put a lot of energy into that ride, knows that there's going to be a pretty right? strong third on. period, starts, okay? and uh, is really doing a great job of holding position. Set, cover proper. Kemmer in the last match, you know, kind of got back into the bout by doing a little bit of riding. Improve. Hall already to his feet, and so this match is just totally going the other way as far as the pace is going. Pace is certainly favoring Hall. Now Kemmer gets on the leg. Good reaction by Mark Hall on that outside low single. That last match, Dean Kemmer, the Big Ten Wrestler of the Week and the USA Wrestling Wrestler of the Week after that victory over Hall. One more time, Hall's in on that shot. Watch that. Three takedowns for Kemmer in the last match. Takedowns are huge in this match. Right now, Hall trying to look for his second. Danger. As he scrambles, he gets a, 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 a count. Right there, there's the three count. There's two, two points. Two points. Now, he's gonna, now he's getting back points. He's got at least two, and he does. Wow. He Wisdom. Well, Kemmer was thinking he would hear the two points. He didn't hear. I think the official just held up the two. And so Kemmer was sitting there not knowing the two points were given. And he gets two points, two back points against him. Now it's seven to one. Hall with a huge lead halfway through the second period. And nobody's arguing about that call. It was, no. a, it was a clearly passed a, a 90 degrees. The three count was given, offered up. Red, you're in, so you red, improve. And Mark Hall. Surprising people with neutral. this domination so We're far neutral. in this match. 30 seconds left in the second period. Fingers, get out of that anyway, grip. You shouldn't be surprised about Mark Hall. <laughs> He's really good. No, that's a good Wrestle point. through that. You're not really surprised. You're just amazed. Wrestle through that. Wrestle there. Short time in the second period. Yeah, starts with a backpack here right now. He's, he's going ahead, sits him back, understands Danger. totally where he is. I'm not sure Kemmer can hear that, but he can't move. So, so much to the point that he also gives up the back points. Improve. Big hole. Michael Kemmer is in. Mark Hall has been dominant One, three, so far neutral, neutral. in the first two periods. Stay out of those fingers, fingers, get out of that. Near fall, escape, there's that shot to Kemmer, and there's no that control. beautiful switch off to a double, and he'll elevate no this uh, leg, try to shelf that. Look at the flexibility no and the control. strength of Hall. I mean, Kemmer is having a difficult time no. of, of shelfing that leg. And now he's going to go ahead and no come control. across, get in a roll through situation. No points yet. No control yet. He's got nothing yet. And Paul is so tight right no there. Control. No control. And you can see the takedown. So now seven. Green, three control. Five. Green one. Green one. You want to break the riding time two. here. You know, you can now get a good, clean escape. Neutral. And Kemmerer has to be on the attack. He was scoring late in the last match get as well. But. Mr. Poise, Mark Hall, always showing poise, never rushing, knows where he's at all the time. Center. Well, he, he, he's, he's going to measure Kemmerer's shot. He also knows that Kemmerer needs two takedowns, but Red. he's given up a stall warning. 
40 seconds left in the third period. A stall warning on Mark Hall. The next one will be a point for Michael Kemmer. Boy, Mark Hall's wisdom in this match, just every tie, Kemmer does not feel like he can get his shot off. Center. Controlling it, measure it, feels it coming, circles back. Short time, a very strategic no match, yet. even with this no takedown, if he, if uh, no Kemmer control. gets it, but Mark Hall's gonna stay in tight. No he knows control. where he's at. No and Mark Hall from Penn State's going to get a third Big Ten championship. Workmanlike, dominant, impressive, Jim. It doesn't look like he's even breathing, you know? Great job. Beat a really good wrestler. You know, stayed on the offense, got that first takedown. You know, always get exhale after you get the first one, but then you know what? You got to get your engine going again. And this was the second takedown. Look at how calm Mark Hall is here in this position, and Mike Kemmerer cannot move. A disoriented Mike Kemmerer. Did he get back points? Yes, he did. Let's go to Shane, who's with Mark Hall. All right, Mark, you win your third Big Ten title against a tough guy like Hammer. What was the focus coming in? What was most critical in getting your arm raised? Uh, just wrestling hard, make the adjustments. Um, I don't know, it was a fun match. I went out there, just thought about glorifying God and uh, keeping my head on. You know, I feel like last time it was an awesome duel. You know, you get caught up in things, and, you know, this time I'm just thinking, you know, God's going to love me no matter what. How do you stay so poised? You've been in so many big matches around the world, the biggest of stages. Talk to me about the poise. Um, I don't know. That wasn't very poised, that third, third period. Um, there are things I'm gonna go back and work on again, and hopefully, uh, you know, keep that lead and uh, maybe build it next time. I just think um, giving up takedowns like that, that's not me, that's not how I wrestle. And uh, like I said, it's just like, the mindset, my body, my soul, let's give it all to God. You know, that's, the, that's my main focus for the rest of the year. Three-time Big Ten champion, Mark Hall. TJ? Freshman Aaron Brooks came out of red shirt earlier this year, and he is the number one seed. Up against Cameron Caffey. We've been watching him since last year. What a talent, Cameron Caffey out of Michigan State. There's Aaron Brooks. The two seed for Michigan State. Really had Cameron quite a time. Quite a 2020. There's Cameron Caffey, a little fear of the fro. And Aaron Brooks comes through with a big pin over Taylor Venn in the semifinals. And Cameron Caffey coming through with a tough 5 3 win over Ava Saad. And here they are. Cameron Caffey out of Carbondale, Illinois. 4.0 Honors College President Award, which is a big deal, computer science engineer at Michigan State. He was a state champion in Illinois for Carbondale. Coach Reagan, father of Olympic hopeful and world-class wrestler Allie Reagan. Welcome the Spartans back to the Big Ten yeah. Championship Finals. It's been a while We're and, and uh, got to be very excited about having Kathy in this mix. He's got an exciting style of wrestling. Got a relaxed look, but he's very explosive. And Aaron Brooks, boy, he's really impressed since he's gotten a lineup. And I think was that uh, that Ben's match that he had in the semis. That was a, 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 a avenging an earlier uh, match that they had, where I think the only loss that Brooks had on the season. So he avenged his only loss. I mean win here and, and he may be looking at the number one seed in the country uh, he lost to taylor men's nine to five in the duel mate you're right that's his only loss comes back and pins him in the semis right there and on the leg center gentlemen one thing i've been impressed with aaron brooks about not only just getting the early takedowns but the second and third period takedowns uh, as well and as he's again, as we say he's not hanging on to leads he's really putting up points Finger, out God, there God, which God. is Kind of fun to see from a young wrestler that, that uh, you know, has, has all the tools to be a national champion. Kathy, what an opportunity. Go out there and make a statement. Don't try to slow this match down. Do what you do. 
If you have an opportunity to take your man to the back, go ahead and do it. McAfee on a 12-match winning streak. Really has had himself quite a January and February. Red shirt sophomore was a qualifier last year. Went two and two in the NCAAs. Action, guys. Tying up Brooks's right arm. See how he's coming guys, across action. there. Across on the uh, grip on the, uh, the Brooks's uh, lead arm on a shot. The right arm. On, Brooks guys. out of Hagerstown, Maryland. He was a four-time state Let's champion. He took a gap year. Went down to the Olympic Training Center. Developed under Kevin Jackson in the USA Wrestling Olympic Training Center development program. And here he is as a true freshman. Coach Jackson's done a nice job here in that, in that capacity. And nice to see him have that type of uh, success. And I'll tell you what, a guy that could uh, offers a lot and keeps people excited about uh, the sport and, and their opportunities. And three-time uh, World Olympic champion knows what he's doing. Come on, guys. Get a hand. And Luis Corliss here at the end of the first period. Let's say hi first to guys. Aaron Brooks's mom, Adrian. Green. Looks a little like uh, she's going to wait to smile Green here. Green to the bottom. Open up, Aaron, right, Aaron has up, been up, impressive up, also at the senior level of uh, freestyle. He's a cadet. Green world set. champion, junior Don't world move. finalist. Oh, He's the National High School Wrestling Coaches Fun. Association Wrestler of the Year his senior year. Oh, nice work there by Caffey, just coming back up, picking into a uh, leg. He's got a deep arm around the waist. He collects the one-point escape. Looks like you're just going to settle for that action. But that's a great time. You know, you pop up fingers, your feet. It's a great time down. to take a little risk reward in your favor here to look for something big. Oh, nice drive through attempt there by Brooks. He collects the far ankle. No, almost, and they went off the mat. He had the foot went over the edge of the mat. They bring him back to the center. Right. Interesting sequence. And mom's asking for two. Happy get to his off there. I was looking for him to go ahead and answer those uh, shot attempts by Brooks. Uh, Taffy, after that escape, wanted to get in there for one and two. It was a slow one point awarding. And uh, you notice how he's kind of shaking a little bit, Tim. He's going to shake him, bring him back over the top. Then he hits his shot. Looks like Brooks can, can, is measuring that pretty well and answering with the counter shot. Both guys wrestle in pretty wide stance right now. You're not looking for anything Sam. that's where you're attacking. Brooks sneaking that right leg up. Where's the center, gentlemen? Where's the center? Done nothing to think that taking off the red shirt was the right move for the Nittany Lions. That's oh, an 84. He's got great strength. And Come on, guys. Work Gaffey let's go. respects that. Come on, Green, let's go. Stay in the middle, guys. Just stay in the middle. Yeah, you mentioned earlier the, middle, the athletic Gaffey. ability of Caffey. We saw that in the semifinals match where he was able to ward off a pretty, few pretty good shots by Iowa freshman Ava Saad to advance to the finals. Red, but we'll see. Red, you know, Brooks bottom. has been pretty Reset. tough. They're pretty solid in the... In the uh, bottom position the whole tournament getting quick escapes sometimes you see freshmen that uh, you know spend a lot of time on the international style they're not as skilled in this position but, but he doesn't seem to have any problem getting out he's grown a lot this year there's the escape and Aaron Brooks has grown a lot this year in his confidence and he's right here the number one and number two seeds going after it one to one minute 40 left in regulation time yeah, both guys have decided now we're gonna get some action on the feet Shots and counter shots. I'm ready. 
And so is Aaron Brooks. He's got the leg up. Neutral. On the inside part of the leg here, which is really going to help him now. Look for him to We're keep neutral. his right wrist free. Kind of work back. Make it a big step. Neutral. Work does the it, it doesn't surprise you at all that Caffey is able to neutral. use his flexibility and athleticism. And Kenny. I think, he, I think he had both knees, Nothing. both ankles We're at neutral. that time. And the cap is able to come around, lock the cradle neutral. up there, he get taken back neutral. onto the mat. Neutral. Neutral. Now Cappy comes back over neutral. the top. Nothing. There we go. The action, the action we wanted to see. There it is. No, I don't know. I'm calling no fall and fouls and uh, letting the action go. No points. Stalemate. Let's go up. Got a really good glimpse of how difficult Kathy is to get off of his feet. And then Mahalik, the assistant coach there from Michigan State. Hands, get out of the hands. Get out of the hands. And you know, when you're that difficult to finish on, it, it's just really a nice little counter action right there. Measured pretty well. He's got the far ankle, and he does have two. Finding the far ankle. 20 seconds left. Aaron Brooks on, gets the score and the lead. Caffey gets one for escape. It's three to two, but it's going to be too little, too late. Aaron Brooks with the late takedown. And the true job, freshman, guys. the number Great one job. seed, proves it out. And mom, Adrian, happy. Kale Sanderson gets another Big Ten champion. You know, Tim, when you're when you're playing defense or you're on defense, you just get low, and sometimes the best thing to do is go forward here. And so we look at this winning takedown. What's the angle that Brooks has? Goes low and gets forward here. It just drives back in. You know, just collects what he can, one leg, and then gets to the far ankle. And that's just a, a hard-fought match. And, it, and Mom gets the two. There it is. She calls it. Let's go down to Shane with Aaron. All right, Aaron, your first year in this Penn State lineup. They pulled your red shirt. What did you most jacked up about wrestling for a Big Ten title? It's just electric, you know. It's hard to not come out here and put on a show for all these fans. So I just want to wrestle, high wrestle in the room and let it fly. You've had a lot of success over the years, age group levels. What is it about wrestling that you love so much? Everything. Uh, it's too much to name. I just love wrestling. Yeah. Thanks so much, congratulations. Aaron Brooks, Penn State Big Ten champion. We're ready for 197 pounds. Number one seed, number one ranked, undefeated, three-time All-American Colin Moore going up against Eric Schultz, a junior, having himself quite a tournament. There's Colin Moore, three-time All-American, two-time Big Ten champion, big-time freshman a year, and boom. It goes like that, doesn't it, Jim? Here he is, a senior. Yeah, it just seems like he was a freshman, you know, uh, just last year when he was wrestling uh, Jaden Cox and going out there as a freshman and going out and taking the eventual world champion down a couple times, a three-time national champion. Here's how they got there. The number one seed, Colin Moore, not having any problem at all. Mowing down his opponents to the championship line. Eric Schultz gets a big win against Shakur Rashid. Four to three, and here they are, the number one and two seeds. Colin Moore out of Burbank, Ohio, Norwayne High School. He was their first ever state champion. He's so close, Jim, for three years. Sophomore year, kind of a health issue. Junior year last year, a guy named Bo. Yeah, it's just Work the, the matchups. You know, you, 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 when you have opportunities, you got to take advantage of. Again, you mentioned the injury uh, problems. The number one seed is sophomore year in the national tournament, and then a guy by the name of Kyle Connell showed up that was unseeded and just had the tremendous national tournament and at the expense of uh, Colin Moore. But this Eric Schultz cat, he's he's uh, one of the reasons why you see Nebraska with 131 points and a and a, a 20, you know, some. Uh, 23 point lead over uh, Ohio State at the time and lead over Penn State. I mean, they, they, that Husker team has had a solid performance up and down. They've had a great dual meet season. They've been competitive. They've gone into a lot of arenas and, and uh, had some big wins. They had a little bit of ups and downs, but uh, 
they're the type of team that, that we're always been wondering all year, who's going to be the third and fourth place team collecting trophies to think that Penn State really has an opportunity to do that. But the way they've wrestled today, who knows? They might be competitive here beyond what that fourth place team trophy. Now they're going to go back to Lincoln, Nebraska with a lot of excitement and a lot of work because they're going to have their eye on the prize. Top four, get trophies. And like you said, they're going to be thinking We're going more out. than a fourth place trophy. Eric Schultz, the red shirt junior here. You're looking at it on the left. A two-time NCAA qualifier. Hasn't been on the podium yet. He's from Tinley Park, Illinois. He was a state champion at Tinley Park High School. He's also all-state football. What I like about him, he pushes the pace. He's a horse. He is. He's a very strong wrestler. Loves to work off that right-handed underhook. He, he wants to dig his own right hand up there underneath Moore. The thing is that Moore has an answer for that here. He's got a, a sequence that he can tack to both sides. He can go below the knee. He's got a beautiful little barrel set up there off of his uh, low ankle shot. We've watched him so many times that you just get excited about his development as, a, as an athlete. And... Uh, yeah, one of those guys I think you, could, you just miss. You, you know you're going to miss watching a, a guy like that, and, and hopefully he can compete well at the next level so you continue to see him develop. Well, he's been an attack machine, changes level, creates angles, but for so many years, until this year, he had Kyle Snyder as Ooh. a practice partner. Did you down. see that? That was sweet. <laughs> Beautiful duck under, well-timed. Perfect answer to that underhook situation. He said it before, he's one of the captains. Also, we talked about the black shirt. It's just the kind of guy that uh, Tom Ryan wants. He says, my job's to come out and get after it. Got to give a lot of energy, score early, bring it on. And that's just how he thinks. And like I said, been so close for three years to getting to the top of the podium at the NCAAs. And uh, it looks like this is the year. Well, whenever we would do an Ohio State meet, the first guys that would come out to the mat together were Luke Fletcher and Colin Moore. These guys are tight. I don't know if they live around each other or whatever, but take a look at Colin Moore on this beautiful takedown right now. He's Red choice. up underneath, duck under. Red. Red's going down. Just catches uh, Schultz leaning into him. And John and Julie Moore from Burbank, Ohio, Red. like what they Come see green. right now with their son going for another Big Ten title and to keep his... Record unblemished, undefeated, Colin Moore. And when you see one of your teammates go out there and win a title, like right, he did, like he did, and of course, you know, avenging a, a loss from earlier the season, you you go out there with a lot of confidence and you're fired up for your team, you're happy, happy for your teammate, and uh, that's the space that uh, Colin Moore is living in right now. Yeah, he, yeah, Colin Moore has gone wire to wire as the most targeted 197 pounder in the country. From the preseason number one to the top, top dog entering the postseason. You see those scores on the bracket, 18 points, 16 points. And of course, you get to the finals, it's a, you know, a 6 0 win, takedown. Two escapes, or two, two takedowns, an escape, and riding time is about the equivalent of uh, putting 18 points up when you get in the finals. But that's the way to do that. Get the seconds left in the second period. Another thing, Colin Moore has higher aspirations. He's already qualified for the Olympic trials at 86 kilos. A little lighter than what he's wrestling right now, which is around 189 pounds. Of course, the Olympic trials hosted by USA Wrestling at Penn State, Bryce Jordan Center, April 4th and 5th. They're sold out. And one final qualifier for that is every NCAA champion, if you haven't qualified, does qualify for the Olympic trials a couple of weeks after at Penn State. End of the second period. A shout out being thrown by Colin Moore, the number one seed, undefeated, and he's unscored upon now going into the third period. Good look at Travell Blagnoff there. He's talking to his man about coming up over the top with those snap downs. To see if he can get uh, Schultz leaning in towards him. Blood timeout. 
Tyler Berger in the middle there. He was in these finals last year. And now an assistant coach. Robert Kokesh had some of the most exciting Big Ten matches. That was a fantastic weight. 174, Kokesh, Evans, Storley. Getting they had some battles. Yeah. And he's come off the farm and come back to from South Dakota and come back to uh, oh, yeah, right join Mark Manning. He, Looking forward to seeing a great job. Looking right. forward to seeing uh, uh, Robert Kokesh's dad at the, the National Tournament. He'll go hey, out of his way and talk Perry. about uh, how much he loves the Big Ten Network and, uh, and seeing all the matches and, and uh, fun guy to be around. That's exactly. I saw him at one of the dual meets, and he's still a little upset about uh, son leaving the farm. Though yeah. he says he says it's a lot of work for me, and I I'm, I'm missing him. Right now, Colin Moore having his way with. Eric Schultz, who's fought his way into the finals. It's the number two seed. Gonna excited about what's in store for him and the entire Nebraska Husker team. I was talking to Colin Moore about being a captain, and he just said, you know, I just want, I'm letting the freshmen and the young guys know I'm there for them. He says it's about servant leadership. No pressure on my teammates. I'm trying to grow as a leader and I want them to know I'm there for them and that's that's just a awesome perspective that uh, when the seniors and the captains have it and they're not lording it over them uh, Jim that's a pretty awesome culture well what you've described there Tim and I, I know that you, you bring up great points but the, the wrestling room all across the country at the high school level junior high level certainly at the college level is such a great leadership laboratory and and uh, we're a very inclusive sport. There's no, the, you take a look what's happening in these college wrestling programs right club, now, right? wrestling clubs, RTCs, the efforts that these guys are putting in, uh, the inclusion of, of some of the women's athletes that are part of it too, and, and, you know, people that anybody can go ahead and go out there and wrestle and, you know, we're gonna we'll be great examples of that coming up at the Nationals. And, Great thing to be a part of. It's really great to see when it's done well. And Colin Moore has done it well for a career. The tunnel's narrowing. The time is now, center, and he guys, is center. focused. Got those fingers. Got the fingers. I'll tell you what, he would take a match just like this in 13 days in, in, the, in the finals. Didn't necessarily show his whole arsenal, but in complete control. And that's what's so amazing about this. Look at the offense that he's still showing with 20 minutes, 20 seconds left. Really emptying the tank, but also being smart. Colin Moore stepping in. Five seconds left to his third Big Ten title. From Big Ten Freshman of the Year to a three-time Big Ten champion. Colin Moore, the second Buckeye to win a championship. His co-captain, Luke Pletcher, and now Colin Moore, the champion. Take a look at one of those. As Colin goes through the Ohio. Look at this uh, beautiful duck under right there. And to the side that uh, Eric Schultz likes to duck under. Parents are happy. And would like to be feeling the same thing in about 13 days. Well, let's go to Shane, who's with Colin. All right, Colin, not so many guys win three Big Ten titles. What are you most proud of in the way you've represented yourself in Ohio State? Um, you know, just trying to stay consistent as possible, trying to be a leader on the team has really helped me just grow in my wrestling and my life. So extremely thankful for my coaches, my family and fans, everyone who's helped me, you know, been an example to me. So. You're a three-time All-American. What'll be key to get atop the podium in Minneapolis? Just being consistent. I've been telling myself before every match this year, expect a fight. I expect a fight and overcome it. So I'm ready for anything anybody throws at me. I'm ready for it this year. Congratulations, Rare Air three-time Big Ten champion, Colin Moore. Back at the rack, and there's Mason Paris. He's undefeated. His opponent is undefeated. We're at the heavyweight championships. 
match for the Big Ten Wrestling Championships on BTN. And here it is, the heavyweight match. Mason Paris, the sophomore, undefeated, going up against the undefeated Gable Stevenson, a sophomore. It's a clash of titans, and it's the first time they've ever met. Well, it's, it could be the rivalry of the future. Certainly in this weight class, it, it could be with the age of these two fellas here, both as sophomores. And with the, the way that they both progressed, of course, Gable you know, shot onto the scene last season and top-rated guy at Paris with the improvement that you've talked about so frequently. Mason Paris all the way to the finals. A shutout over game Trent Hilger, Hilger and Gable Stevenson beating the number three seed, perhaps the third best wrestler in the nation, nine to four. So it's number one, number two. Here we go. Yeah, I look at that, that bracket, Tim, and I see Tony Cassiope and I've seen Trent Hilger. Th those are two really good heavyweights, all right? But these, these two here have separated themselves with their action. Blow off action. Yeah, you were referring to what I said about Mason Perez. He's transitioned to be a big time wrestler from an athlete. He went to the Olympic Training Center last summer. He had great workout partners and it was his first full year as a wrestler because it's well documented he was a three-time sport guy three-time state champion or linebacker and he is using some linebacker moves there and gets in on the uh leg but uh, nice job of scrambling by uh, gable yeah you see the athletic Good ability action, of gentlemen. both men in that situation beautiful little swing single by paris and answered really well you can see how Stevenson was able to go ahead and drag him along a little bit when he makes the adjustment, he squares up well. And when Stevenson is wrestling well, you never see hardly any weight on the heels. Of, and, and he, I, I bet you when he's drilling, he's not putting any wear on his heels at all. So when he's operating, he's got his heels up off the ground with very little weight, and he's attacking just like that. Two, three, two. two points to Gable like. Stevenson, the four-time state champion out of the Apple Valley, Minnesota. Super. They're both world champions. Both junior world champions. We're off. And both of them have put Sir. on size over the last year. Yeah, you mentioned 20 to 25 pounds, both men spending the right time. Let's get a fair start here, gentlemen. Bottom of your set. Just, Don't just move. maturing. Cover, you know, the that, that's the other thing, too. They, they're both young guys. Stevenson was wrestling here in June at the final X. One. Here at Rutgers in June for a chance at the world team, and he lost 4-4 four, four, and 3-3 three, three to Gwiz, our, our man. And so Gable Steeson right there, back on the stage at Rutgers here at the rack for a Big Ten championship. And no secret, you know, Gable can, can go ahead and attack, you know, three quadrants of the, of the body. It does, it does it can go low on both, both sides, shoots ahead to the outside shot. And he really worked well off a left-handed underhook to go yeah. ahead and score points. Mason Paris out of Lawrenceburg High School in Lawrenceburg, Indiana. He was a three-time state champion. He was third as a freshman. That was his only loss in high school. It was 206-1. and one. Yeah, And he was third in the, as a freshman at 182. Three-time first-team All-State linebacker. And he qualified for the state and shot put in 110 high hurdles. So quite an athlete but he has become quite a wrestler a world champion and now undefeated facing Gable Stevenson for the first time ever both guys look pretty fresh out there as far as the, the wear the nice little little slide by drag there beautiful finish and I just love seeing the guy with the lead Right, late in the first period, and a beautiful escape there. You see the athletic ability on that shoulder roll, and what made that unique is was that it was on, with Stevenson on the right-hand side of the body. Normally, you learn that on one way, and uh, talk about young man learning wrestling here to hit that shoulder roll you know, from the opposite side. That's pretty good, pretty good wrestling. Now, Mason Paris in on a shot. Not much time though. Oh. <laughs> yeah, going in. Well, that fired up the corner. Take a look at that. 
end of the period action here. The clock was off. I think Gable understood that and relaxed a little bit. But good job of uh, by Paris making a statement, making an impression. There's his third quick escape. Only giving up 34 seconds of riding time. So he needs to... His path to victory here is just keep the activity level high. You may give up a takedown, maybe even two, but if you can keep that activity level high, when he gets in the top position, he can be pretty effective if he tires his opponents out. That action there at the end did fire up Sean Dormat, the head coach in his second year at the head coach of University of Michigan and his alma mater. So a two-time All-American there. And Josh Shirella, also All-American for the, his alma mater, Michigan, and they liked the attack and the uh, the answer, but it was too little too late there at the end of the first period. It's four to three now. No riding time advantage. Anybody's ball game. Paris having a hard time getting through that collar tie defense. You see that right at the end there, he had a little shuck right there to get him a little bit of a better angle to clear off to get to the middle of the mat. Red, Red, you are first one. The second period on Gable Stevens, he's right back in. Where's action? <laughs> Continuous action here to the big guys. The crowd really appreciates that. I appreciate it. We appreciate it. Look Boom. At you know, very few people get away from that left-handed underhook, and then he rolls them through and then gets his belt buckled to the mat. Maybe take advantage of a back points. A fingers. Of, uh, more real estate. Fingers. A long way from over. 20 seconds left in the second period. Four to three. Gable Steeps in the head has been worn for stalling. And I think that's what Paris needs to do is kind of create some of those type of scrambles to, 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 you know, to test the uh, you know, test the uh, conditioning of, of Steepson. And I'm not making the assumption that that, uh, that, that, that isn't going to be Minnesota, hard on choice. Paris, too, with his conditioning. But, you know, you, you, you've got to go ahead and try to push the, 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 the pace of the match, particularly when you're behind. Four to three, gentlemen. Third period. Bottom of your set. Top Mason cover. Paris Hold coming to on the top. Whistle. Finalist for Michigan. They have three Olympic red shirts. Stefan Michich, Logan Massa, and Miles Amin. One escape Amin and Michich both are going to be Olympians. And they... What do you got there? Okay. Well, what are they going to call? I mean... He had no way to go. Yeah, went right into the head table. No, no takedown. Yeah. But it was a drive. Yeah, for whatever reason, it, it looked like Paris just stopped for a second while the head was down. And I think what uh, Brandon Megum is going to protest is the fact that uh, he had both ankles kind of lassoed up here before they went into the table. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what I would be protesting if I was in the corner. Uh, take a look at, at uh, Stevenson hit the shot, and once he hits the shot, he drops down to both ankles. Down there, comes down, drops down to both ankles, and there's just not much room in these. In right. These, uh, Confirmed no takedown, Brandon Agum in his fourth year as the head coach. He was a two-time Big Ten champion, three-time All-American, part of a Big Ten championship team in 1999. Heading up the program at Minnesota, losing that challenge. And Paris has not had an answer Fingers. for that left-handed collar tie. See how he's working the head there, Tim? Coming hard with the left hand right there, coming over the top. And a minute 20 left in the regulation. The score's five to three. There's no riding time. When, 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 when Stevenson doesn't like the position, so he can feel everything that's coming with that left-handed collar tie. Now he's in a position to score. Big word you just used there. Stevenson has such a feel. Yeah. Now he slides back a little further. You know the attack's going to keep coming. Great Hello. change in angle there after the low pick, but he didn't want to put too much work. In. Yeah, he got an escape and a takedown there. So now, Mer Mason Paris in a hole, seven to four. Back to that left arm form. See how he feels everything, comes inside each shot. 
you know, the, the, the athletic ability of Gable Stevenson is one thing, right? But the, the, again, I use this word a couple different times. I was talking about Mark Hall, the wisdom of how to control a match, you know, in your favor and control ties. You could probably give up the takedown Ooh, here. He gives up the takedown at seven to six. He lets him go. And he's got five seconds. Mason Paris, five seconds. And Gable Stevenson going to fend Great him music. off and Good win night, his guys. championship, his first championship after falling short last year. And there's Letitia with the, the mother of Gable Stevenson decided for her son's championship. And the Gophers get a Big Ten champion. Take a look at this work here by Gable Stevenson here with that beautiful double and changing of angles. It keeps it, you know, pivots off his knees really well. Look how he uses those shoelaces flat, getting a better angle to go ahead and finish the technique. Let's go to Shane with Gable. All right, Gable, you and Mason did not wrestle the duel in the regular season. What were you most looking forward to? What was the approach against a tough guy like Paris? I love the haters. I love the doubters. I've seen on my timeline people saying I'm ducking. I showed up today, and I show up in two weeks. How would you assess the way that you wrestled in that match? I think I wrestled great. Need to pull more triggers. He wrestled excellent also. Hats off to him. You were a runner-up in Pittsburgh last March. You'll be in Minneapolis. Be a lot of Gopher fans there as well. What is the biggest threat you give to the competition? Say it again. What makes you the biggest threat to the rest of the field? I'm dangerous, I'm lethal. I go for the seven, and I proved it today. Go for nation, stand up, I love you. Congratulations, Gable Stevenson, Big Ten champion for the Gophers.